Hello, good afternoon, and welcome on today's video, which is on Vibrio Capoeira. My name is Dr. Adela Bassi. Let's begin. So, what are Vibrios? Vibrios are jam negative rigid curved comma shaped rods which are motile by means of a single polar flagellum. The origin of the term Vibrio is from vibrare, which means vibrate. They are non sporting and non capsulated. They are present in the marine environment and surface all over the world. Okay. Cultural characteristics, they are strongly aerobic, but can grow anaerobically. They grow at 16 to 40 degrees, but the optimum temperature is 37 degrees. The pH is 6.4 to 9.6, with an optimum pH of 8.2. Sodium chloride is required for growth at 0.5 to 1%. Vibrio chloride grows on ordinary culture media. On a nutrient agar, is a moist, translucent, disc light colonies. 1 to 2 mm diameter is a bluish tinge and transmitted light. There's also a distinct odour present. On the Conti's agar, initially it is colourless but later becomes pink due to lactose fermenta fermentation. On blood agar, it is initially surrounded by the zone of greening, the later the zone is clear due to hemodigestion. On a gelatin stab culture, infant debuliform liquefaction in three days at 22 degrees Celsius. And in peptone water, in six hours, fine surface pellicle is formed. Turbidity and powdery deposit is later formed. Special media for vibratory, so there's the holding or transport media known as VR medium, Ventricarium and Ramakrishnan medium, and there's Carry Blair medium, and these are components you can see here and how what it's made up of. So one to three millimeter stu milliliter stool is added to each bottle. Vibrio do not multiply but remain viable for several weeks. The enrichment media, so it's alkaline peptone water at pH 8.6. Monsoor's total chocolate telocyte peptone water at pH 9.2. Both of these are good transport as well as enrichment media. <laughs> Platine media does alkaline bio salt agar, Monsoor's gelatin total chocolate, tryptocrasis telluride agar, and thiosulfate cypsate bio salt sucrose medium. So the TCBS medium is widely used, and yellow colonies turn green on further incubation. For the GTTA, small translucent colonies of greyish black centre and turbid halo occur. And colonies become 3 to 4 millimeters in 48 hours. And also, the PSA data is used quite commonly as well. A stin test can also be used. So, the Vibrio colonies are identified by a stin test. Look full of growth is mixed with a drop of sod, sodium to your chocolate on a slide. Positive test is indicated by loss of turbidity, mucoid experience, and a formation of stin as a rope is drawn away from the suspension. Biochemical reactions also take place, so they are catalyzed and oxidase positive. They fermented with acid production for glucose, mannitol, maltose, and sucrose. Late lactose is fermented late, and dole is formed in nitrates and used to nitrates. These two that give chlorella red reaction. So a few drops of concentrated hydro uh, sulfuric acid is added in 24 hours peptone water culture. And there's a development of reddish pink colour due to production of nitrosol and indosol, which indicates presence of vibrio clary. Methyl red and urease tests are negative. So they're susceptible to heat, drying and acids. They can survive for two, three days on linen and dry condition. They can survive in top water, tap water for 30 days, cold storage food for 30 days. They'll toss stains to survive better than classical stains. And they're susceptible to disinfectants, including chlorine. So here's a wee table showing you the difference between classical clara and l tor vibrio clara. So you can see here the hemolysis is negative for the first three, but for the l tor vibrio they're positive. And quite the opposite effects to be honest with you. Hemolysis, vorius prostroa, check erythrocyte agglutination, negative for classical, positive for l tor. For the polymaxine B sensitivity is positive for classical. Group 4 phase sensibility is possible, it's uh, positive. And for L for page 5 sensibility is negative, whereas on the other hand is negative, negative, positive. There are also all serotypes of chlorella vibrios. So you have the Ogawa serotype, the Inaba serotype, and the Hikojima serotype. And there's the O antigens A, B, A, C, A, B, C. Transmission of vibrio cholerae is from feces to water, fresh, fresh water, salt water, and into food. Oxen, collagen. Toxin B binds to glandular cells and provides a channel for toxin A. 
A catalyzes the ADP regulation and activates the adrenaline cyclase. Polary causes the cholera disease and this results in massive fluid and electrolyte loss up to 20 liters per day. This leads to extracellular volume loss, hemoconcentration, and hyperkalemia, raised risk of acidosis, and shock. This also leads to muscular cramps, renal failure, pulmonary edema, cardiac arrhythmia, and paralytic aloe. There is no fever, no white blood cells in the stool. The specimen collection stools are collected in an acute stage before administration of antibiotics. They are best collected by a number 26 or 28 the rectal catheter. Rectal swallows may be used particularly in covalent patients and the appearance of a rice water stool. What is not suitable is specimen for pans or vomiting specimens. For transportation, whenever possible, specimen is put to the bedside in an inoculated plate sent to the lab. Preserved at 4 degrees or in holding medium whenever delay is more than 4 hours. So this would be in a carry Blair medium or VR fluid. If the delay is only a few hours, transport the medium. Transport medium can be used such as one size medium or alkaline Pepsi water. If transport media are not available, filter paper strips to be soaked in stool samples sealed in plastic envelopes and sent to the lab. So process of specimens is via direct microscopy, which is reliable. Rapid diagnosis, demonstration of triprocessing, transfer therapy, continuous immobilization by antiparasitic antibodies, enrichment media specimens so incubated for 6 to 8 hours, inclusive of transit time, followed by sticking and plating the non sensitive media. Dialect plating can also be done before enrichment. The plating media used, as mentioned before, is BSA, the concave of TCBS. After overnight incubation, suspicious colonies should be treated for admission to the community and antibodies. Testing water samples for vibrios. There are two methods the enrichment method and the filtration technique. 900 milliliters water is added to 100 milliliters tenfold concentrated Pepsod water at pH 9.2 and is incubated at 37 degrees for 6 to 8 hours. A second enrichment is done before plating on solid media. And for the filtration technique, filter the water through millipore membrane filter, filters, place it directly over the surface of the selected medium. With cholera therapy, Massive secretion of ions, water into the duct lumen, dehydration and death. The therapy is through the placement of antibiotic therapy. The vaccination is partially effective but is not generally used. If it is used, it's one of tablets. So prophylaxis and treatment of prophylaxis is injectable killed vaccine gives 50 to 60 percent protection and a live oral vaccine using Texas SARS strain is currently under study. The treatment is prompt and adequate replacement of water and electrolytes, and this can occur either oral and intravenously. Oral tetracycline reduces periods of excretion of vibrio and also fluid requirement. And looking at other types of vibrios is halophilic vibrios, so these have high requirements of salt, natural habitat is sea, water, marine life. The disease, so disease producing halophilic vibrios are vibrio parahemolyticus, vibrio aldrinolyticus and vibrio bonificus. So looking at these three, for for vibrio parahemolyticus, transmission is via raw seafood, grows best in high salt, food poisoning is due to sea fish and outbreaks have occurred in Japan and other countries. For vibrio aldrinolyticus, it's associated with an eye, ear, wound infection in humans and exposed to seawater. And for vibrio bonificus, wound infections in humans which is exposed to seawater and result and also consumption of infected oysters which penetrate the gut resulting in severe septicemia and high mortality. That's the end of today's video. I hope you've enjoyed that and tune in for the next one. Thank you. Bye-bye.